Welcome back, everybody, to Hoops HD. David, wake up. Oh, David, oh, wake up, wake up, oh, wake up. Oh, wake up. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it, this is HoopsHD.com's Championship Week video notebook. Uh, what day of the week is it? This is day number eight of the day week. Day eight of the week. Uh, I guess like the Beatles song, eight days a week. You know, yeah. Be well, Championship week. week typically has 13 days, but we've got even more this year. David, a week is seven days. Yes, eight if you're a Beatles fan. That's yeah. it. Uh, a championship week is We more. should have Selection Sunday tomorrow. Okay, I agree. Well, well we've got we, we we actually have our first automatic qualifier, Chad. We do. Uh, we got a lot to get to tonight. Actually, uh, we are going to do some news and notes. Uh, I'm on Ch I'm Chad Short, by the way. The puppet is over there. Yeah. John Salika should be jumping on here in a few minutes as well to join us. We do news and notes. We're going to review all the conference tournament games that happened and the ones that didn't happen. We'll discuss that as well. Uh, the one that didn't happen. Uh, we're going to review the. Uh, preview upcoming games, update our survival board. Uh, what else are we going to do? Um, do uh, oh, well, we, we got our feature at the end. We'll do our feature at the end. Okay, we've got a lot a lot to get to here. So why don't we start things off with news and notes. Okay. Okay, news and notes. A uh, few games, I uh, still regular season games. First of all, Western Kentucky, a uh, very, very bad home loss to Old Dominion. Decent Old Dominion team, but yeah. can't lose that game. And get an at-large bid if you slip up the conference. I, I agree with that. And if you've been following under the radar all year, like I, you, you know that like we like Old Dominion and we certainly like Western Kentucky. And by under the radar standards, it's not a bad loss. The problem is when you're fighting for a spot inside the bubble, you basically need to beat everybody that's not inside the bubble, or you have very very few strikes when you don't get multiple chances against teams of that caliber, which Western Kentucky didn't. So part of it is a circumstantial disadvantage, uh, at least when it comes to not having as many opportunities. But uh, th this one hurt. I, I just don't think the committee is going to take them, especially the way the bubble seems to be playing out with a lot of teams that are on it getting the wins that they need. I, I think that they need to win the conference tournament. And because – the thing about them, Chad, if they don't win the conference tournament, you know what that means? They lost to yet another team outside the bubble. Right. I, I, I'm i not quite willing to say, hey, they've got zero yeah. shot at all. So I'm not willing to like, like take them off the survival board quite yet. If they, they have one more against Old Dominion again tomorrow, and then you pick up two more in the conference tournament, you lose in the conference tournament final. Uh, I don't like it. They're probably out, but they're not 100 percent out. They're like 99 percent out for you right, right. now. Right? Yeah, fair enough. They lose again to Old Dominion again tomorrow night or or Saturday. Uh, I don't know if it's a night or an afternoon game, but then yeah. I think they're done at that point. Uh, a couple other games of note here: uh, Georgia Tech picked up a solid win, not a solid, but picked up a road win at Wake Forest. They could not afford to lose that game, or they would have been sweating more than I. Th I think they're they're very close to being in at this point yeah, now. I, I think they are too. Um, Colorado State. Uh, played a game against Nevada. It was a great game, actually. And uh, Grant Sheffield hits a three for Nevada with one second left to go. Colorado State then seems to have actually tied the game uh, yeah. at the buzzer, but his foot was out of bounds, and it was probably half, probably two tenths of a second too late. On top of that, yeah. So Colorado State very damaging loss for a team we had in the first four just just the other night. Yeah, they were straddling the bubble as it was, and you need to again, not lose the teams that are not inside the bubble. Well, you don't really need to be losing to anyone. Uh, I, they so. still have a path that does not involve absolutely needing to – their path is better than Western Kentucky's right now, I think. Yeah, I, I would agree with yeah. that. And this was a game, if you watched it, where Colorado State just came out like gangbusters. I mean, they, they sprinted out to a big double-digit lead and, and seemed to hold it for a while, but Nevada fought back. And I guess we'll get into this when we get into the MWC – or the Mountain West tournament, but – is Nevada a sleeper team? They are really playing. Uh, I, th I think they absolutely are. I think they're a very yeah. dangerous team in that tournament. Now, it's a tough tournament with you've got Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego yeah. State, Utah State. So there's a lot of tough teams in that tournament. Um, yeah. One other quick note, uh, Kate Cunningham for Oklahoma State is questionable uh, for Saturday's game. I think it's actually Sunday's game, but uh, questionable for this weekend's game against West Virginia, the regular season finale. Uh, they really need him, not necessarily for that game, not even necessarily for the Big 12 tournament because I think they're in. But they need it for the NCAA tournament. So hopefully, yeah, they get absolutely. Back yeah. Um, on that note, though, let's go ahead and move to the games that were played today, and we're going to start with what just finished up here. The 
the last uh, the semifinals in the Ohio Valley Conference, if that's up on the screen, it should yeah. be. And what a what a pair of semifinals. And uh, David, why don't we just start with a little recency bias? Let's start with the bottom one there. Moorhead State's win over Eastern Kentucky and what was a Great game. Moore had made a, f- a few times look like they were ready to put EKU away. EKU fought back, fought back, fought back. Uh, but at the end of the day, Broom hit a double-double. Uh, Cooper made four, three thro- four free throws late in the game, uh, and and the shot at the buzzer was not even close for EKU, and Moore had somehow survived and advanced to the championship game. Yeah, it was certainly an exciting game. There were stretches where both teams were kind of sloppy. Uh, This game kind of had an interesting storyline. These two are, at least by under the radar standards, they have a a longstanding rivalry. They're about an hour or so apart. They've been playing since the 1930s, and this is the last time they'll face each other, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, as Ohio Valley Conference members with EKU leaving. Uh, These were also two teams that prior to this season – had been pretty much absolutely awful. Uh, You know, both of them missed the conference tournament, I want to say, two years ago. EKU missed it again. So they've gone from barely even getting into the conference tournament to both being 20-game winners and facing each other in the semifinals. So they they both kind of got good at the same time there. And uh, if this was the finale, they went out with kind of a bang. It was Moorhead State led for most of the second half, But EKU hung in there, actually had a lead at one point, and we're in a position to win it all the way up to the last possession. Yeah, and uh, John Sleeka is joining us. And, John, we were just on the very first conference we were discussing for the night. And uh, that top game, the Belmont-Jacksonville State game, also a good game, also a missed three at the buzzer that could have tied it. Both games had that. Uh, uh, Nick Mazinski, a double-double for the Bruins and, and the Bruins advance. Yeah, that's going to be a good sign for a Belmont because there have been tournaments in the past where Mazinski was not able to go for the Bruins, at least as far as the OVC, and it did end up costing them the auto bid. I think it was two years ago, but that was the same season in which they ended up beating Temple in the first four. Yeah, they got in that year at least. But, John, what do you think about this championship game tomorrow night? It's our first conference tournament championship game. Not our first auto pit, but our first conference tournament championship game, Belmont and Moorhead State. Well, as we alluded to earlier, Mazinski's absence was one of the main reasons Moorhead was able to win the second game, although that one was at uh, Moorhead's campus. Belmont, Belmont won fairly convincingly on their home court, and my guess is they're going to have the edge here. Moorhead does have a nice young core, but they're probably a year or two away from being a serious title contender? Uh, well, I, th- I think it's going to come down to Broom, uh, for Jedi Broom for Moorhead, Nick Mazinski for Belmont, and David uh, Mazinski. When Mazinski was on the court at the time they played in Nashville, yeah. uh, uh, Mazinski kind of took it to Broom. Yeah, he did a little bit. Jedi Broom, an excellent young player. And when, you know, Moorhead State, <laughs> what we've seen throughout the year is a lot of teams are forced to either have to double down on him, which frees up their perimeter players. Moorhead State was some pretty good outside shooters, too, or they don't double down on him and he can pretty much have his way with anyone that's trying to defend him, except for Zinsky. Uh, or Mazensky. I don't even know uh, what to talk about here. Anyway, it's late at night. So like, they're not going to have that, that advantage where Butler or I'm sorry, I don't even know who. (laughs) This is not Butler. There's nobody named Brzezinski on this (laughs) team. Uh, Let's move on to another conference. How about that? But I I, I, honestly, just real quick, I think that. I I was about to make a really good point, but I just drank too much. (laughs) I think think we're going to see one of two things. We're going to see a Belmont blowout or we're going to see a real close game that Moorhead State steals the bid on. And that's what I. That's kind of my call here. And I think the Belmont blowout is a lot more likely, unfortunately. I'm glad Staley can see he knows who's playing and who plays for. Delica, do you know who played in the Atlantic Sun semifinals today? Uh, as we move on to the next conference, here here they are. Well, I know uh, Liberty was going to be playing, and I know North Alabama was playing for a little bit of pride. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what. Here we had Liberty uh, was in a real battle with Stetson. The final score there is not indicative of how close that game was. Stetson was actually had a second half lead, uh, but Liberty in the last about ten minutes or so just turned it on. Uh, and that was the afternoon game, David. And then North Alabama uh, kind of cruised over Gulf Coast. It probably was not as close as that final score, that one. Yeah. 
Uh, North Alabama, though, is, uh, is still in their third year of their four-year transition. They're ineligible for the NCAA tournament, which means that Liberty, despite not having being, not being done with the ASUN tournament yet, is in the NCAA tournament, correct? Yeah, they are. They are the automatic bid winner by default, one way or another. They'll either win it outright tomorrow or they'll win it by default tomorrow. Yeah, they'll, they'll win it. You see this little note at the bottom here that explains what the rules are, but basically Liberty, as the outright first place finisher, would get the auto bid if North Alabama wins the tournament. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's actually that championship game won't even be till Sunday, so we're going to talk about that game a little bit more again tomorrow and s- Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. But, uh, but Liberty North Alabama is our championship game. Uh, let's move over to the, another conference that had a very interesting storyline in it. The games, maybe not so much. Honestly, they weren't so much. But in the Missouri Valley Conference – Snoozers. So we said we had three snoozers of games, quite honestly, all day. This is normally a great tournament. I was excited for these quarterfinals, and we saw the top three. We saw Loyola, Indiana State, and Missouri State all blow out their opponents. Yeah. Uh, Drake, though, advanced John in a different way, unfortunately. Yeah, this was kind of weird because this was something that our friend Lee Del Vecchio had shared in the email thread. Whereas teams in the Missouri Valley, they had been following protocols. They had been set aside by the conference. They forgot one tiny little detail, and that's the fact that they're in St. Louis and they have to abide by protocols that the city of St. Louis is going to be imposing on them as far as contact tracing and other protocols. So the first game in the Missouri Valley that cannot be made up in a manner of speaking is going to allow Drake to advance automatically. Yeah, the Missouri Valley Conference, the only conference to get every single regular season game in, David. I think they would have sacrificed a few of those if they could have got their entire conference tournament in. Which they yeah, I, I agree with that. And it was really unfortunate. I, I don't, everybody is really upset, <laughs> Northern Iowa fans in particular, and they're pointing fingers. And, and I understand that. But essentially what happened is that there was protocol for the conference, which was, which met the CDC guidelines, which was followed and they would have been able to play today, which which was followed. There was a positive test. Uh, they, they, They were testing every day. I think they needed to test negative every day for a week and a test that was conducted on Thursday came back positive. All the rest were negative. Uh, the CDC guidelines would have allowed the game to continue and you would have removed the positive test, but the contact tracing guidelines in St. Louis meant that anyone that had been in in contact with him at all uh, would have to quarantine. That was basically the entire team. There was nobody left to play under those guidelines, even though they had tested negative and it's just, you just hate to see it. I, I don't think it's anyone's, fault as much as it is just a really unfortunate circumstance and even if it is somebody's fault it's everybody's first pandemic a lot of things that have, have happened chad that that first i have pa- first and last pandemic yeah. god willing um of course, right. one Did, of the other con one of the so, other consequences now is other teams and other conferences are going to be scrambling with their host cities just to make sure yeah. they're going to be okay yeah, yeah and that's and that's fine a lot of things that have happened during this pandemic that i haven't liked that you haven't liked it's been weird for me it's been weird for everybody uh we haven't gotten to do some of the things that we wanted to do or or in the way that we are used to doing them uh i think it's more of a circumstantial unfortunate incident than it is an incident of fault i actually am going to defend the conference here well no I, yeah and I'm, i'll i'll be with you on that david but let's kind of trans, transition yeah. back to the games um like we said these three games are actually played all end up being pretty much blowouts uh, not even as close as some of those final scores were missouri state was up 30, I think, at, at Valpo in the first <laughs> yeah. half. At least it felt like they were. Yeah. Um, I think it was like 18, but but Valpo, I think, may have won the second half, but it didn't matter. Uh, said Indiana State Evansville, I guess, was close for a little for a while there. That might have been the best yeah. of the games, uh, but Indiana State was able to pull away late. Uh, but how about these two semifinals tomorrow? Because I think we're finally going to get a couple of really good MVC games at this Loyola Indiana State game. Maybe. The trees can stick with them. And I think Drake, Missouri State should be a great game, actually. That's the one I'm most looking forward to. I, I, I think the trees are, are playing really well right now, but I, I think Loyola is just in another league. Uh, Loyola, in order for the trees to win that one, they would have to play really well, and Loyola would almost have to have a bad game 
if Loyola plays average or, or much less good, they're going to win that. But, but Drake and Missouri state, I am looking forward to this one and it wouldn't shock me at all. If Missouri state ended up winning that one, I, I just also, love the way the bears are playing right now. And this it's is also worthy. It's also <laughs> noteworthy to point out that three years ago when Loyola actually won the conference tournament route to the final four, they did have a scare in their uh, quarterfinal game, but yeah. not this time around. Yeah, they did. Uh, uh, but this Drake Missouri State game also a very important game for Drake. Uh, they we talked about the fact they couldn't afford to lose to Northern Iowa. They didn't play Northern Iowa. <laughs> yeah. uh, they also really can't afford this loss to Missouri State. It's it's a better loss than Northern Iowa loss would have been. But really, if they have a shot at that large bid, which I think they do, they have to win this game and lose to Loyola in the finals. They can't lose this game and they can't win this game and then lose to Indiana State in the finals either. I think yeah. that's the Right. Path, although they will be on the board, I think, no matter what, all the way. Yeah, they'll be on the board for a while. Um, Atlantic 10 Conference, it was quarterfinal day. And uh, David, for all the excitement we had going into this conference about all the great teams in it, top four seeds all advanced at the end. Uh, yeah, a, a, real, a real chalky day. Uh, one of the games, I know, as good as UMass looked yesterday, I thought that they were in his pitiful at St. Louis had looked for a lot of the year. I, I thought you, I thought that was going to be a really close game, uh, but the Billikens really, maybe their best game of the year, at least uh, that I had seen today. Well, they, they actually played UMass on Monday this week and, and, did, and rolled them then also. So, okay. uh, so, so they've been, they've been rolling UMass all week, but that, but th yeah. they're looking as good as they have all year. Uh, yeah. Bonnie's so had a bit of an on court skirmish in a close game against Duquesne and then came out and just, crush them the rest of the way after that skirmish. Yeah, that, Duquesne yeah. ended up shooting something like one of 17 after that technical foul. <laughs> yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, the that was a game-changing moment, you could say. VCU sprinted way ahead of Dayton. Dayton fought back to make it close, but at no point did it feel like VCU was not in control of that one. And then Davidson and George Mason, I changed the channel. Yeah, it was blown. Uh, John, John, what do you like tomorrow in these two semifinals? Uh, you know, Davidson is uh, the only team that's not, you know, with any serious at large hopes at the moment. But uh, I think the other three are all teams that are on the right squarely on the bubble is uh, can Davidson keep it going, especially that they're going to be playing in the Siegel Center on VCU's home court? Well, this isn't going to be a typical year where VCU would have the home crowd or the Ram Nation right behind them. But I think uh, VCU is probably going to end up winning this one. And if you look at the first matchup here, I'm going to say that our priests, well, most of the panel's preseason pick in St. Louis is probably going to end up winning the whole, th whole thing, not just tomorrow. Uh, I, I like that. I, I do like St. Louis and VCU tomorrow, David. Do you want to go with the Bonnies or? No, I'm sticking with that too. Okay. Uh, wow. We're unanimous. The, we, we, we're, we're not supposed to agree, guys. It's just not, yeah. not the way the show is no good if we agree. All right. Um, all right, let's move on to another conference. How about the Southern Conference kick things off today with its two first round games? Uh, Western Carolina team that have been playing well heading into the tournament, so a little bit of a surprise that the Citadel beat them and beat them fairly easy. It was close for a while, but but yeah. Citadel got, got it late, and Mercer just absolutely pounded Samford. Yeah, and it's always fun to watch the Citadel win a game. <laughs> I uh, love it. And, so, and it's, uh, it sets up an interesting because it's because because the South Central plays very interesting test for Greensboro tomorrow. Yeah, it is. Uh, again, contrasting styles. I think Greensboro is clearly the superior team, but it's still interesting from a from an X's and O's standpoint. And Mercer, uh, a team that was really hot around Thanksgiving. You know, they had the win at Georgia Tech. I want to say they beat Georgia State as well. I mean, they were yeah, they, they played Georgia State twice and split with them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were a team we were really big on, kind of a disappointment throughout the year. But beating Samford today, Samford's first season without Scott Pageant went exactly as everyone expected, I think. Uh, John, what about these other two games here? The Chattanooga ETSU, Furman VMI, especially that Chattanooga ETSU game. I think that could be a great one. I think this is one where uh, East Tennessee State probably going to be slightly more experienced, end up winning this one. And BMI is also going to have an interesting style of play is at least at least as far as a potential matchup against uh, Furman goes right here but ultimately I think we're looking at a 
a Greensboro Furman championship game and look for the Spartans of UNCG to end up winning the whole thing? I'm, I don't think so. I'll go with Furman still. And, and David, I think they may be playing Chattanooga in the final. Really? Like, I, I, I kind of have Chattanooga, it. Chattanooga had some, a couple really nice spurts this season. And- yeah, they really did. They were real red hot at the beginning. Uh, they, they piddled out about midway through. That's not – the thing I, – I really, really like this Furman team, but I could see VMI giving them problems and even beating them. I almost say that I'm, I'm going with Furman so long as they can get by VMI. Yeah, and I think we're all kind of ignoring Wofford. By the way, hey, they, were the, they are the two seed of the tournament, you know. I mean, Which is incredible. <laughs> So I think this is a, this is a, one of the most wide open conference tournaments it, there is. And- yeah, it kind of is. And, you know, it kind of ate itself. There was a lot of parody. There were a lot of good games this year. There were. And, but I think anybody that quiver comes out of this is, is a dangerous term- team in the NCAA tournament as well. Yeah, they are. Like Furman, we know, or, you know, we certainly know about them. Wofford, a real young team. I, 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 I spent this whole year thinking Wofford was a year away from being really good. Well, they're really good now. And, you know, Greensboro, we thought they could be a team that would be inside the bubble before the season started. So. Uh, it was also first round day in the Sun Belt, and I, and especially the first two games were, were, very, were fun games. I, I, yeah. Uh, Arkansas State and South Alabama both pulling out uh, close wins, but uh, Georgia Southern had a gr- real strong effort. Uh, uh, South Alabama was actually down in the second half, but I think it made eight points before they turned it on. Uh-huh. And yeah, David so doesn't a couple care. Of fun <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, David. Well, yeah, a couple of fun games there. I wish I felt that either any of these teams were going any further than, than what they did today. I don't know. South Alabama, maybe in Louisiana, but, uh, you, you know, hot, hot, hot getting the win there, John, against the little Broncos. Yeah. I think this is the wrong conference to act like these were all snoozers or yawners. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, Arkansas state actually a quick note. They went over five minutes at the end of the game without a field goal. It was just free throws, but they, uh, yeah. Georgia Southern also wasn't hitting shots at the end <laughs> yeah. of the game. So it was, you know, it was, it was, a little crazy uh you know the, the other two games though john your hot 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 team won obviously uh yeah. troy with the only upset knocking off text out and scott cross scott Adrian cross Ray. beating his old team congratulations yeah, to him i it must have felt well I, I hope it felt good knocking out the school that screwed you over uh yeah uh, but john what do you think about these four quarterfinal games now tomorrow as we bring georgia state louisiana texas state and coastal carolina into the fray I mean, if we're looking for other coaches that can also do a potential damage of the tournament, I look to a uh, Cliff Ellis and uh, Coastal Carolina here, but Texas State, they seem to have been on a mission themselves this year. But if I had to go with a favorite out of this field, I'll probably uh, stick with uh, Georgia State. Yeah, and you got this, again, the interesting th- thing here. Uh, Coastal Carolina and Troy did play each other during the regular season. The other three games are all involving teams that did not even play during the regular season because of the divisional format. So it's a, it, it could be a really fun game again, David. I, I, I'm, I really look forward to this. It's all four of these games tomorrow, I think. And Someone I think got got the electricity oh, no, in it, the puppet oh, oh, did bunker. Did you ask a question? I, I was getting undressed. Um. See, that was way too on. much information. <laughs> I don't have any clothes on right now. Oh, what, what was the question? <laughs> the question was, was whether or not you, what you thought about these four games for tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Louisiana South Alabama game. I think that that's going to be close, closely contested. I don't think Texas state's going to have too much trouble with hot, hot, hot. Um, th- that's the only one that I'm really like, looking forward to i don't i think arkansas state's been playing well as well i think that those first two games are going to be good ones and i would not count out appalachian state i, I think the only blowout's going to be coastal carolina and troy in my opinion but yeah we'll see uh let's get moving on to one other conference that was in action today and is still in action as we record this as it was the west coast conference and john we had a thriller actually in the first game tonight between loyola marymount and san francisco i think it was a two-point game the entire way here uh you know, but Loyal Marymount somehow pulls out the 70-66 win. Yeah, a little bit of a disappointment for San Francisco that's been kind of a noisemaker in the WCC in recent years, but not able to break through towards the top three, top four, and still not going to happen this year. Yeah, and they get St. Mary's tomorrow. 
Uh, the other game tomorrow is going to be Pepperdine taking on most likely Santa Clara, who has a 16-point lead in this, late in the second half as we record this. Uh, and they uh, they pulled away late last night from Portland, a game we didn't get a chance to discuss because we recorded a little early as well. Uh, but, David, assume we have Santa Clara advance. Uh, what do you think about tomorrow's quarterfinal round between St. Mary's, LMU, Pepperdine, Santa Clara? Pepperdine, Santa Clara would be kind of a fun game. Um, I, I kind of like the way Santa Clara has been playing, especially kind of tonight. Uh, what what I think is that we might have two entertaining games, and it'll set up uh, two very unentertaining semifinal games. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the same. I think Loyola Marys play Mary Marys playing very well. St. Mary's is a better team than their record has been. Um, so. Uh, I, I, th- I think we'll have good games tomorrow. I agree, with you, but that's about all we could say. And then Monday is going to be a different story. Uh, we have a few other conferences in action that did not play today. Uh, let's start with the America East back in action after a week. Uh, the 15 day event of the America East tournament. <laughs> it is semifinal day tomorrow. UMass Lowell at UMBC, Hartford at Vermont, in which is the, John, is the game that should have been the America East championship game last year. Never happened. Yeah, a little bit of a disappointment if you're a fan of uh, Howie the Hawk here, but at the <laughs> same time, I think this is going to be a game that Vermont does end up pulling away. And and gives Lowell any chance? Give them a little bit of a chance for maybe a half, but I think uh, UMBC probably too much pedigree in this conference in it, recent memory. David, the American East semifinals may look a lot like the West Coast Conference semifinals are going to look. Yeah, they, they could. I, I, I think UMBC and Vermont roll. Uh, as much as I love Howie, Vermont's going to trunk them. Let's also take a look at the Patriot League back in action. We already had the first round games, but it is quarterfinal day in the Patriot League tomorrow. Loyola at Navy, American at Army, BU at Colgate, Bucknell at Lafayette, uh, among other things, Colgate and BU playing for the 7,000th time this season. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to know what to make of any of these teams simply because they, they've they only played two or three teams all season. Uh, but I, I don't know. I really still like Navy. Um, it, it, it would be fun to see Army. and Well, it's always fun to see Army play Navy in anything, but it would be fun to see them play in the semifinals. Yeah, uh, John, do you foresee any upsets in terms of lower seeds tomorrow? These are all on campus sites. I'm not used to seeing Bucknell seated this low right here, at least as far as uh, number six in the Patriot League. I mean, they have a bit of a pedigree themselves as far as uh, winning this conference tournament. So it'll be a team that uh, bears watching here, but I still have a feeling that Colgate is going to find a way to win the whole thing. Yeah, I, I like the idea of picking Bucknell for the upset tomorrow. Uh, I think the other three higher seed. Well, I think American Army could be a good one, but I think the other three higher seed teams win. Uh, yeah. Bucknell might be the one upset. It is also, let's see, it is first round day in the, well, the quarterfinal day, part one in the Summit League. One of the conferences that splits its quarterfinals over multiple days. So we have the Omaha-South Dakota State game and the South Dakota-Western Illinois game coming up here on Saturday. The other two games will be on Sunday. Um, we've seen one eight upsets a few times in this well, conference. We, we, this is one of the most entertaining tournaments every year. And this conference doesn't get a lot of national attention, even by under the radar standards, it's sort of buried on, what is it? OSN. You, you have to have a satellite package, the size of well ours to get a lot of the games, <laughs> but this tournament, is immensely entertaining every year. I'm glad it's on ESPN plus and some other channels that I guess it, somebody gets somewhere, uh, but watch this. And yeah, like we see it, we see carnage in the quarterfinals every year. It seems we do. And uh, John, first of all, do you see an upset in either of these two games tomorrow, the eight or the seven seeds pulling the upset? Uh, Western Illinois has been able to pull the trick in recent years. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it tomorrow, but I don't see the Jackrabbits losing either. Uh, okay. Well, then uh, the other question is who, because it's the first time we've looked at this on link, who's going to win this entire thing? I'll probably go with uh, South Dakota State if I had to make the choice. Uh, David, I'm going with North Dakota State. South Dakota Whoa. State ha- has had injuries lately. Uh, South Dakota, I just don't trust them. I'm going, I'm going with the Bison. 
That's a good pick. I, I have been beating South Dakota State's drum since July, I think. And um, I, I don't think – they've been a little bit disappointing. And like you said, injury-ridden. I actually am going with the Yotes. Oh, you're going with the Yotes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of my things I don't like about my North Dakota State pick is they've got a red-hot Kansas City team that they got to play in the quarterfinals. Yeah. So, so my team might get knocked out in the quarters, but I'm going to go with them anyhow. Right. Uh, it is also another conference kicking off for the first time is the Colonial tomorrow. Uh, we, it is first round day. Uh, these games are playing at JMU's home court. We got Elon against Towson, Bill and Mary against UNC Wilmington. Uh, this is a conference that was hit by a lot of shutdowns due to COVID yeah, in the well, last couple weeks of the season. As far as I know, all 10 teams are good to go at the moment, but we're crossing our fingers on that. Um, but uh David, how about these two games tomorrow, first of all? Do you see uh, anything kind of a, worth watching? <laughs> well, I mean, the, every knockout game's worth watching. It's uh, They're playing for the right to stay on the survival board for at least 24 more hours. Uh, Towson, kind of a disappointment season. Pat Scary, an outstanding coach. Uh, you're you're I, it's so much so that I'm surprised that you don't see his name mentioned uh, for bigger jobs, but a rough year this year. I, uh, I kind of think Elon wins that one, and uh, Bill and Mary, I, I kind of like them over Wilmington. Wilmington's just been kind of putrid. But once we get past these opening round games, the, there, there's some good basketball in that semi in that quarterfinal round. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going northeastern to win this whole thing. Oh, I am too. Yeah, yeah. Jim, you're another team dealing with injuries. John, John which way are you going to go? Uh, probably not going to go with that JMU for the aforementioned reasons, but I also look at a team like Hofstra who. Should have gone to the tournament last year, but did not get to cash in their golden ticket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep an eye on six seed Drexel this t- this conference. Yeah, as well. it, yeah, and it, that that's yeah. They, they're a team that can really play well. They don't always do it, but they can. Uh, last but not least, one more conference kicking things off tomorrow. One of our it is maybe our, probably our favorite league. Only a four team conference tournament this year. It is semifinal day in the Northeast. And if there's any two games you're going to watch at all tomorrow, watch these Sacred Heart at Bryant, Mount St. Mary's at Wagner. Uh, th- this is going to be a fun day tomorrow in this conference. Yeah, I kind of wish they were playing out the whole eight or, or, or ten team field, but I get why they're not. Um, I, I, I like this Bryant team, but I, I think that if the chalk holds, Bryant-Wagner would be a really, really fun game. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it will hold out. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with, with Wagner to win this. Uh, whole thing yeah. over Bryant. Uh, John, which way are you going? I uh, wish uh, Mary Mack were here to uh, compete, but alas, we are not going to get that opportunity. They actually that would have, would they, I think they actually finished fifth overall, so they yeah. wouldn't have not even made it if uh, under a 14 format. I think, with that being said, I'll probably go with uh, Mount St. Mary's, who does have a, wow. a history of uh, coming out of nowhere to win this tournament. Yeah, Mount St. Mary's. Plays at uh, a fairly slow pace, um, actually. Yeah. You know, when, when are the you know, most of these teams are very fast-paced teams. Mount St. Mary's is the exact opposite. Yeah. So uh, the, the style difference there is, could be a fun one as well. Uh, Bright and Sacred Heart, I think, could be a fun game, too. I, I, they could be worth watching no matter what. Uh, on that note, uh, let's uh, look for my notes here. How about some survival board? Oh, yeah. Let's get, let's get to the survival board. Uh, this is our survival board. It is up there on the, you can see our conference tournament tab, also the survival board tab. You can click on it. This is a list of everybody that remains that has a chance to win the national championship. Yeah, make the NCAA tournament and, in theory, win the national championship. A uh, lot of teams still left on it. We've eliminated, I think, about 80 well, since, well, let's, or let's, about let's, 70. Let's look at the elimination first tonight here. This is where we were heading into the day. We had 285 out of 340, 47 that started the season, no, yeah. 357. We have 285 teams who left, but as a result of today's games, we are down to 266 teams left. Okay. And it so- will be 265 as soon as the West Coast Conference game goes final. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's take a look at how teams are listed on here, David. And let's start with bold and all caps because there is yes. one sitting there. Yeah, Liberty is an automatic qualifier, so bold in all caps, definitely in uh, as the conference champion. 
Uh, the bowl and teams, th those teams are also definitely in. And the reason we know they're in is because when the committee comes here and sees that they are in bold, they know that they have to take these teams. All right. What about the, uh, there's two other ways teams are noted here though. Some are regular types, some are in italics. John, yeah. if I'm a committee member and I'm coming to this page and I'm looking at Seton Hall, uh, I see they're in italics. What does that mean to me? It means I would probably hold my nose while I'm looking at Seton Hall's <laughs> profile, but there are probably good enough, enough good things on there where you have to at least uh, take a look at them and debate them as opposed to about 15 to 20 other teams for two to three spots. Yeah, and, and you look at some of these other teams that are regular type, they are a team that should will only get in via an automatic bid. So look at yeah. Marquette. Sorry, you pulled off some interesting wins early in the season. You are not going to get even if you win, even if you make it to the Big East tournament championship game, you're not going to get in unless you actually win that game and get an automatic bid. Right, and, and just to like reiterate what you said, Chad, this is an invaluable tool for the selection committee. Uh, I, we've been asked, why do you all always act like the committee looks at the board? Well, they have access to the board. They, they have the internet in the room and they can pull this up. And there was an incident, believe it or not, uh, if you're if you're new to Hoops HD, a year where the committee selected a team that was not under consideration. It was Tulsa. And I want to say it was back in 2015. Do you know what they ha what happened, Chad? They kicked two of the members off of that committee. They, they did. Two of those members yes. were thrown out. That was how horrendous yeah. that, that Tulsa pick was. Yeah. And the reason they were thrown out was not because of their terms expiring, no. not because of it. Of, of the selection of Tulsa even, but the fact, the fact that they selected Tulsa when Tulsa had already been eliminated from the survival. Yeah, right, yeah. So again, I mean, the, the committee needs to look at this page. Mitch Barnhart, when you're looking yeah. at this, right? if the team's not out here, you can't put them in. Right, yeah. We've, we've helping you out. We're doing this. Yeah. All right, let's go to our Hoops HD hot seat. Okay. So yeah, recapping, the, the, these are coaches that we're looking at that are on the hot seat and need to have a strong finish to the season to maybe save their job, maybe save their reputation, uh, maybe save their careers. And, you know, we, th that's who we've got so far. Uh, yesterday's was really profound. Indiana's next head coach. Yeah, not, not the Already current one. On the, the next one. Already on the hot seat. Yes. Uh, let's take a look at today's coach on the hot seat. And this, this is a guy, David, that Really, I mean, it's been a long time since he's had done anything of note. Uh, of course, we're talking about head coach Norman Dale of, from, from the Hoos from Hoosiers. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, well, I mean, 1952 <laughs> Indiana State High School Championship was great, but what have you done since then? Yes, and you, you may recall from the movie, he, he, he was on the hot seat from the very beginning. I think he'd been thrown out of the NCAA or something like that. So you don't get more on the hot seat than that. He did something insane. He, he played a game with four players. He only had four players in the game. Now, yeah, they, they did win the state championship, but this guy is on the hot seat. And I don't think he's done ever, anything since then, has he? Uh, it, 1952, it's now 2021. <laughs> yeah. That's almost 70 years. Yeah. Uh, no one's able to determine team since then, John, right? I still want to know how he was not on the hot seat in 1952 when his players were just slugging players on other teams <laughs> and just never having any repercussions. I'm That's... looking right at you, Ray Butcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's go to any other – let's pull this out here and go to final thoughts. John, do you have any final thoughts for the evening? I could potentially see uh, Wright State fans wanting to uh, break two things at once when they, first of all, when they choked in their quarterfinal game, having some Billy Donlin flashbacks. I mean, how fun would it be to see uh, his current team in Kansas City actually make some noise in the uh, the Summit League? Uh, yeah, I, 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 like I said, that Kansas oh. City team is dangerous. I did yeah. Right state still, it's going to take months to get over that. Um, anyway, kind of a busy day tomorrow. It's sort of an overlap between the last Saturday of the regular season. We'll have coverage of all that in the write-up like we always do, but championship week as well. Um, we talk about red or, um, you know, big days that are circled on the calendar on the college basketball. One is, of course, the first day of the year. Another is feast week when we have, in a normal year anyway, all those exempt tournaments. Another Thursday of championship week, the second one, one of the greatest days. And I would argue the Saturday, the last Saturday of the season, 
is another great day on the college basketball calendar. One of my favorites. It's a long list of season finales, uh, a lot of stakes games in the regular season and a lot of conference tournaments in the under the radar. I, I'm always excited about tomorrow. I, I'm in, in, in I'm, I'm I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, Tomorrow it tomorrow's night's show might be three hours long. That's yeah. Awesome. They're, they're, we're gonna have a lot of news and notes because of all the huge regular season games that, that are gonna be played tomorrow as well. Yeah. Uh, including two teams that are only eight miles apart and have never met in the NCAA tournament. Oh, uh, well, oh, did yeah. Wazoo and Idaho State? Yeah, I believe they, they they just scheduled a game. Yes. All um, right. No. Yeah. <laughs> but on that note, on behalf of John Stalika and David Griggs, I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We're back again tomorrow night with. The ninth night of championship, championship week yeah. again. It's a, a week is seven days. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Talk to you again real soon.